looks better. Can't wait, Poggers. Oh, oh, warm. Oh, my okay, oh, oh, mm. I forgot about everything. Oh, no, no, oh. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Thanks so much for joining us here today. And today is a day about Path of Exile. You're going to find out a lot of awesome stuff we've been working on. Before we get started, though, I wanted to mention that there are Twitch drops that you can win. Below the live stream, there are some instructions for signing up and linking your Twitch account with your Path of Exile account. And if you do that, you'll be eligible to receive the drops. So today's live stream has got four sections. They say you should start your show with a bang, so we're going to start right off with Path of Exile 2. Ancient ruins, evil grows once more. The seed of corruption advances, spreading dread and despair. We must give chase. Wow. 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 These sands hide countless secrets. Three thousand years of dormant malevolence. We must hunt down the sea and put an end to this madness. If Rayclast is to survive. We're there now? Look at the health bars! We get boss health bar steal! Dude, I'm still fucking over the cinematic, mate. Oh, that's wicked. Oh, that's good. That trailer really shows what we have achieved with Path of Exile 2. I am so proud of the efforts of the entire team in putting that together. Path of Exile 2 is a lot more than just new acts. We want combat to feel both brutal and responsive, even at low levels. We're ensuring that each weapon type has unique and different mechanics. Each weapon class feels different to play, and today we're going to start by demonstrating the new spear weapon class. Spears are a weapon class favoring mobility with both melee and ranged attack options. To that end, each spear will grant you at least one mobility skill. In this case, the spear comes with both an engage and disengage skill. When you engage, it increases your melee damage for a short time, and that really encourages you to be mobile during combat. Now that we've arrived at the Ancient Gates, we're going to show you another of the new weapon classes in Path of Exile 2, Crossbows. Crossbows oh. are special in that they grant attack skills implicitly. This particular crossbow grants Power Shot, which is a high damage single target attack. In order to modify what Power Shot does, you're going to need to equip Bolt skill gems, which change the type of bolts that are loaded into the crossbow. Here we've got three different Bolt skills that the character can switch between depending on the situation. Armor piercing bolts. Incendiary bolts. Permafrost bolts can be used to disrupt packs of enemies to prevent them from closing in on your position. You can then follow up with armor piercing bolts to do plenty of damage. Q, is that Atlas? We cannot follow through the skill tree. Where's Let the skill tree? Let us return to the caravan and question this defector. This is the Ardura caravan, your town in Act 2. I am oh, Asaya, damning. the Sekima of the Ardura. I care not where you came from, nor what caste you might have been there. All that matters is that you have shown yourself capable in battle, Jinga. I like this Remain town. a friend to the Ardura, 
and you shall have nothing but respect from us. Because we just got the Storm Sphere skill as a quest reward, now would be a great time to switch back to spears and use some ranged abilities. Storm Spear fires a lightning projectile which splits on contact. That looks like a clear ability. The other skill we're using here is called Blazing <laughs> yeah. Lance. Blazing Lance I creates that. a trail of fire from the ground, dealing damage over time. However, if you're willing to stand in place for long enough, you can throw a second spear that will fan the flames for much more damage. Oh, that's so cool. Oh! Wow. If you have any questions about what you just saw, we'll be doing a Q&A later on. While Path of Exile 2 definitely won't be released this year, we do have a Path of Exile expansion you can play one week from now. I'd like to introduce Path of Exile Ultimatum. But wait, there's more. You only live once, Exile. YOLO. Make YOLO! But hardcore. This is what I've always wanted in a game. I'm so glad it pauses to let you yeah. choose. I'm so <laughs> glad. Imagine if it didn't. <laughs> the reward you deserve. Wow. Oh! Oh! Rework mail! Rework on the floor! What? Everything's reworked! Oh! oh. <laughs> ultimate reward requires oh. ultimate risk. Oh. Face the ultimatum. Oh. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'm done. Oh, I wasn't expecting that many rework. When some people think of the Val civilization, they think of blood sacrifices or Queen Atziri or lost temples in the jungle. Made some changes to how you receive your labyrinth enchantments. Previously, when you completed the labyrinth and went to enchant an item, you couldn't see what random result you'd get. Now, the result for each type of enchantment is shown to you in advance, so you can make the right choice. In the Eternal Labyrinth, you now offered three different helmet enchantments to pick between, in addition to the boots and gloves. This will make it a lot easier to find enchantments relevant to the skills you're using and to apply them to appropriate items. In 3.14, we're going to stop giving out unique jewels for each day's fastest labyrinth runs, and we have added these jewels as very rare drops that you might find in the labyrinth's final reward chests. Another highly requested labyrinth related improvement is that you can now consume an offering to the goddess and a map device to open portals directly to a random trial. This greatly accelerates the speed at which you can find your final trials. Oh! We've also added so two good. new labyrinth realize. specific unique items, including the Scales of Justice unique shield, which rewards building your character with a careful balance of life and mana. If used correctly, you'll be granted protection from shock and ignite, as well as additional fire damage. Kadira Perandus now has a much larger selection of unique item rewards. We have also rebalanced all sources of Perandus coins so that Perandus content is still the best place to get them from, and oh. their capability to upgrade items too rare. The four corrupted essences have had some of their less useful outcomes improved or replaced. Now, the only way to get the powerful upgrade-only top-tier essences is through remnants of corruption, which come from essence content. Blessings, the currency used to upgrade Breach Uniques, can now be used to upgrade Breach Stones between tiers also. <laughs> Abyss Jewels have been rebalanced and are on average more powerful than they were before. Uh -oh. We've also buffed Abyss Chests to make sure that they are the best place to get Abyss <laughs> Jewels. We've also introduced Abyss Scarabs and have added four new Abyss-specific unique jewels, such as Tekrod's Gaze, a murderous eye jewel that increases your main hand critical strike chance and your offhand critical strike multiplier based on how many murderous eye jewels you have equipped. Opportunity to rework them, so that high-level gameplay is less reliant on obtaining certain beastcrafts. Now, when you use the splitting beastcraft recipe on an item, both copies are marked as split, which prevents them from being split again. You cannot imprint split items. One of my favorite reward changes in this expansion is that Incursion's Temple of Atsuatl can now be itemized. 
Once you have access to the map device, Alva can turn your completed and ready-to-run temple into a tradable object that can be consumed in the map device. This means that players can specialize in either making temples to trade to other players or trading for temples that are ready for them to run. There have also been a lot of changes to the temple. As you may know, specific rooms in the Temple of Atsuaro can drop unique incursion items that can be later upgraded. Many of these base unique items have been improved in this update. Previously, the temple's boss, the Omnitect, dropped random rare items with special incursion mods on them. Now it also drops rare items with incursion mods based around the themes of the rooms your temple contains. Higher tier rooms cause more rare items. Though very deep will not be getting quite so rich from it. <laughs> A big problem with rewards and betrayal is that players deem it not worthwhile to kill Katarina because it resets your betrayal syndicate board. In this expansion, we have massively increased the incentive for doing this. Now if you manage to kill Katarina, all Syndicate members drop their rewards at one tier higher than they previously would. This change required the introduction of a new fourth tier of reward from each Syndicate member and encourages the use of a larger variety of Syndicate targets and safe house leaders. We have improved rewards that were not as interesting or valuable as the best ones. For cases where we deemed rewards too powerful, we moved them to tier 4 rather than nerfing them. The tier 4 rewards are approximately twice as powerful as tier 3 ones were. We have also added a new unique item to Katarina's drop pool as further incentive for killing her. Anointments to Blighted Maps have been rebalanced and reworked so that each has its own purpose and with a consistent increase in reward as the oils get rarer. This is basically entirely buffs because one big nerf we needed to do was already done last league. You can now corrupt Blighted Maps. These can very rarely drop the new Tainted Oil which allows you to apply anointments to corrupted items. Oh. We have also introduced Blighted Scarabs. We have added two new types of catalysts themed around speed and critical strikes respectively. These new catalysts are rarer than previous ones. As discussed in the recent development manifesto, the current 3.13 version of Harvest is too rewarding, so we're rebalancing its crafting and also increasing how often you'll encounter portals to the Sacred Grove. The current version spams you with way too many crafts, so each seed has a chance to grant a craft now, reducing the overall number of crafts you can perform per garden, though you will encounter the grove 60% more than you did before. Some of the most powerful crafting options have been removed or changed. The heart of the grove encounter is now a map fragment that can randomly drop from tier 4 harvest bosses instead of rarely replacing the entire grove when it spawns. 